Hello, my name is Micah Watson and I'm a composer and music producer. Welcome to the series called Mastering Ableton Live, where I teach you everything there is in the Ableton Live manual, chapter by chapter. This is part three of a four-part series where I talk about all the concepts mentioned in chapter four. Today I'll be talking about what automation envelopes are, what clip envelopes are, and what MIDI and key remotes are. I'd like to remind you that chapter four is a conceptual chapter, which means I'll be telling you about the concepts and what these various things mean and are, and not so much how to use them. We will get to that in further chapters of the manual, so just stick around for that. All right, so automation envelopes. The word automation in music production refers to a control value that changes over time. So for example, if you have a song and it starts at a very low volume and you want it over time to increase in volume automatically, one would say that you automate the volume control. You can decide when and where to make the volume rise and go lower. You can do all of this with a few button clicks and mouse drags. Volume isn't the only thing you can automate. You can automate practically anything in Ableton Live. You can automate the tempo and make the song go faster and slower. You can automate the panning, which is to say the signal comes either out of the left speaker or the right speaker or somewhere in between. And anything that your heart desires. In Ableton Live, automation is represented by breakpoint envelopes, which can be drawn, edited, and recorded in real time. These points here are the breakpoints, and the shape that this line makes is called the envelope. Recording automation is straightforward, so you can either draw it in like this, but you can also record it in real time, and recording automation is very straightforward. All changes of a control that occur while the control bar's automation arm and arrangement record buttons are on become automation in the arrangement view. Whereas in session view, automation is recorded to session view clips if controls are adjusted while recording in session view with the automation arm button enabled. Changing an automated controls value while not recording is very similar to launching a session clip while the arrangement is playing. Changing an automated controls value while not recording will deactivate the controls automation in favor of the new control setting. So anything you've programmed or written into the DAW will stop and will do what you've just done instead. If you've just changed the volume to 20%, even though it was at 80%, it'll follow suit and change the volume to 20%. The control will stop tracking its automation and rest with the new value, so in my example, 20% volume, until you hit the re-enable automation button or until you launch a session clip that has automation. So the reason this is similar to launching a session clip in arrangement view is that if you recall, if you're playing back in arrangement view and you launch a session clip, the session clip will play in favor of what's actually been tracking in the arrangement view. And you can go back to playing back what's in the arrangement view by hitting the back to arrangement button. And similarly here, you can go back to the original automation that you've programmed by hitting the re-enable automation button. So let's talk about clip envelopes. Envelopes, like I mentioned before, refer to the shape of a particular effect over a piece of audio. It's a visual representation of mathematical parameters that you've set. Envelopes can be found in both tracks and clips. Clip envelopes are used to automate or modulate device and mixer controls. To modulate something is simply to vary the value of something, like modulating to different key or modulating the bass with the LFO to make it wobble a little bit. So audio clips have, in addition, clip envelopes to influence the clip's pitch, volume, and more. These can be used to change the melody and rhythm of recorded audio. MIDI clips have additional clip envelopes to represent MIDI controller data. Clip envelopes can be unlinked from the clip to give them independent loop setting so that larger movements like fadeouts or smaller gestures like an arpeggio can be superimposed onto the clip's material. So what this means is that you have an envelope that changes the volume of a clip over time. You're not really changing the actual clip per se. So what this means is that the clip and the envelope can be unlinked. They can be kept separate. This means that if you want the clip to stop following this envelope effect that's over it, you can just deactivate that part. It also means that you can have tons of fun by exploring various effects by changing clip envelopes on audio as well as MIDI. And the final concept for today is MIDI and key remote. Ableton is super keen on liberating its users from the mouse, hence the controls like Ableton Push. 
And because they want to liberate the musician from the mouse, most of life's controls can be remote controlled via an external MIDI controller. Remote mappings are established in MIDI map mode, which is engaged by pressing the MIDI switch in the control bar. In this mode, you can click on any mixer or effect control and then assign it to a controller simply by sending the desired MIDI message, for example by turning a knob on your MIDI control box. Obviously, this MIDI control box needs to be connected to your computer and recognized by your DAW so that it can actually receive the MIDI message and assign the correct control to that knob. Your assignments take effect immediately after you leave MIDI map mode. Session clips can also be mapped to a MIDI key or even a keyboard range for chromatic playing. So if you have a cool bass clip and it's on a particular pitch and you want to pitch it up and down, instead of creating new clips and assigning new pitches to all of them, you can just map it to your keyboard and play it like a new instrument. MIDI keys and controllers that have been mapped to live's controls are not available for recording via MIDI tracks. This is so because these messages are filtered out before the incoming MIDI is passed onto the MIDI tracks. Session clips, switches, buttons, and radio buttons can all be mapped to computer keyboard keys as well. This is great if you don't have a MIDI controller and you don't want to be so tied down to your mouse. This mapping happens in key map mode, which works just like MIDI map mode. And of course one can expect that Live offers, in addition to this general purpose mapping technique, dedicated support for the Ableton Push and Push 2. So if you do have one of those, I strongly recommend you learn how to use it. Thanks for watching, and in part 4 of the 4 part series of chapter 4, we'll be talking about saving and exporting various MIDI clips and audio files in Ableton Live. If you like this video and you want to get more content, please like it and subscribe it, and make sure the notification bell is clicked so that you can get emails when I post next.